bring power to that word, Lord. Bless her. And we pray that you may bless us and feed us and meet us in our point of need. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Right. Um, we've had the reading. Mark. But we're going to watch this little clip here. Um, I got it yesterday, and it's, um, I just thought, wow. Just watch it, and I'll tell you the other bit I watched, and you see. You see, these are natural disasters. If you had watched the film, 2012, who remember that film? Okay. 2012 um, was a film that came out in 2009, and it tells of um, the end time. When that film came out, some people believed it was towards that time that, yes, the world was coming to an end. But what struck me reading this passage today is the similarity between what's happening today in the world, the natural disasters that are taking place with what is um, what the holy the Hollywood is um, showing us. Now, looking at the um, the text for today, the, what we've just read. I love message, the message version of the Bible, have a way of putting things in a way that we will understand it. Um, the message Bible, entitled today's um, passage as um, Doomsday Deceivers. And I kind of, ah, I like that because it kind of puts, you know, an earthly twist to it where we can just understand what's going to happen as we read through the passage. Now, I want us to look at this passage. Don't look at it from just what we read today. Because when we do that, we miss the whole message. We don't capture the whole of it. If we look from, you know, even chapter 11, um, we look at chapter 11 of um, the same Mark. It talks about the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And we also, you know, in that same place, it talks about the series of conflicts between Jesus and the, um, and the leaders, of the, that the religious leaders. Um, that's... You can see that from uh, chapter 11 to 12. And um, then in chapter 13, it talks about the apocalyptic message. We also see in 14, um, the betrayal of Jesus. And in the same 14, we see where Peter denied Jesus. We also see in that same 14 of the crucifixion, Chapter 16 tells us of the resurrection. So let's take the stuff, the things as they happen one after the other. When you hear, when you read through those things, you will see that the answers Jesus gave in this chapter 13 have something to do with what he has been doing from the beginning. The religious leaders were just involved with themselves. They were not actually looking at what was happening around. The disciples, their reaction to um, chapter 13, verse 1, when you start from there, they're like our everyday 
you know, people that go to a different town. When you go to a different town and you see the buildings and things around, you are amazed, aren't you? You start talking about how beautiful the place is. That's what they were doing. They looked around in the place and said, wow, teacher, look at this temple, how beautiful it is. <coughs> now, this same temple, if we look back to the history of the temple, the temple was, uh, you know, it was um, redone. It was rebuilt and, it be, you know, it was made so beautiful that even it was said that when you look at it, it was done in gold and it glitters. So it was a beautiful temple. The stone works of it was lovely. And to a Jewish man, it's a place where they had pride in. It's not just an ordinary building. You remember, you know, even in the Bible, it says that it's blasphemy when you say anything, you know, against the temple. I want us to just go through it one by one, what he's saying in each chapter. I was so wanting to just pick one chapter and go, one verse from that chapter and go with. But I want us to look at it one by one. But I want to home in on towards the last chapters of the, the verse that we have read. Like I said, from the verse one, the disciples were just looking at the external, external beauty of the building. Now, I think we as believers, we are encouraged to look more than what's in, on the outside of a building. What's inside of you is more important than what's on the outside. How you look after the inside is more important than what the outside, the exterior of that building, you know, of the body you have is. I am not one to want to, you know, go through notes that I have written and go one by one. <laughs> so it's kind of a it's, a, it's a passage I wanted to just really go into one after the other, bit by bit. I have um, taken this bit down, and I want you to just follow it with me. Say the temple complex is indeed a marvelous sight. Herod began construction in 20 BC, and workers are continu were continuing with finishing touches as Jesus visits some 50 years later. So a building that took 50 years, 50 years after it started, they were still working on it. The temple is located at the top of mount a mountain, and it's huge. It's a very huge uh, building. Uh, one of the early historians, Josephus, um, described how big the place is and calls it a stadium. It was 607 feet um, or 185 meters. The temple is 100 cubits or 150 feet, 45 meters wide and 100 cubits high as its highest point, the height of a modern 15-story building. So imagine how big that was standing. Temple was a beautiful building. I just really today want to home in on Towards the end of it, it talks about the birth pains. 
He said, these disasters we will see, they will happen. But that does not say the end is here. Today you hear a lot of people say, you know, the end is coming. Look at the signs, the earthquakes, the natural disasters, and everything that is happening. But does that, did the Lord say that is the end? He said, no. That's like birth pains. For every mother here, when you are about to give birth, you get these hiccups, right? It doesn't mean that your baby is coming there and then. It's a preparation. So during this preparation time, what are we doing? How are we getting ourselves ready? Are we just waiting to see when the disaster will strike? Or, you know, are we going to just hide what is going on? 2012, the movie, when, the, when things started happening, at first they didn't want to tell anybody. How are we preparing ourselves? Yesterday we listened to um, the ladies that gave their testimonies and their life's journey. Um, one of those were, was our Leslie here. Now we, they talked about the pains and the things they went through in life. Was that the end of their journey? No. It was actually just a beginning. You have a foundation and you build on the foundation. The foundation of our life is not something that we, you know, we can just say, yeah, we're going to come into this world and we're going to do things the way we want to do it. No. The Lord have a plan. Sometimes the plans, they don't fit with what we want to see. We go through stuff. We have pains. We have trials. People put you down. Does that mean God have no plan for you? No. He has a plan for you. When you see sickness come, and when people around you are getting different things, big things, do you think that is the end of your world? No. There was a, a lady once that used to go out and pray for people. And this lady was sick, had very visible illness. You know, when you have stuff like maybe your eyes blind one side and you pray for people and they are receiving their sight and people look at that woman and said well how come you can't actually pray for yourself but do you know what the Lord knows why sometimes we have issues and we think oh Lord please take this away from me but when God takes that away from you, your attention, where is your attention at the time when you have nothing, no problem, no pains? You forget that God is the architect of your life. We forget who is sustaining us. And we just focus on the good life. Focusing on the good life will only lead us to doomsday and will only lead us to a place where we listen to the people that will tell us what is not right. Verse 5, there, the Lord says, you know, be careful that you will not be deceived. Looking at different, uh, you know, contempt, you know, interpretations and what people think about what was written here, a lot of people talk about different things. 
like how people are preaching, how they're telling you to live your life, how they say that, you know, there is no suffering as a Christian, you should not suffer, that everything should be right. But I'm sorry, I haven't seen it written anywhere in the Bible where it says as a Christian you will not suffer. Instead, the Bible says that we will go through. We will go through. But that the Lord himself will go through with us. So yeah, when you know a young girl leaves his her mother's house, like the person that shared with us yesterday, and decide, I don't actually want to do what my mother told me to do anymore. I want to live my own life and goes out and sleep outside in the streets or prostitute prostitute herself over the place. Until she come to a place, I said, like the prodigal son, I said, I will go back to my mother. And today, her story is different. She's going about telling people, I made a mistake. Yes, I accept. But God is greater because he taught her through that journey. So yeah, when we hear of doomsday, people saying, you know, yeah, as a Christian, you should not be suffering. You should not be begging for food or you should not be, you know, driving a bank, bank up car because God is a God of plenty. Yes, he is a God of plenty, but that's not what he says we should do. We need to learn to trust in him. We need to learn to hold on to him. I've left my phone there. I was going to read to you a song that one of this, um, this, um, this guy died two, three years ago. It's one of a twin, um, Andre Crouch. Says, through it all, through it all, I have learned to trust in Jesus. Through whatever you are going through, learn to trust in Jesus. Let's not learn to trust in ourselves. Let's not learn that we can trust in our brothers and sisters because people will let you down. The only person that will not let you down is Christ. How are we holding on to him? Are we letting what we see around us control our relationship with him? Are we letting the suffering we see around us control our relationship with him? How is your faith? How is your faith today? Are you trusting in him? Are you like Andre saying through it all? Are we trusting God? Or are you saying this is too much? Are you going to just take the decision like Job's friends were telling him, just curse God and die? Is that the best way to go? Through it all. Through whatever we go through in life. Let's trust in the one that have the answers. Trials will come. Tribulations will come. Let's learn to trust him. He's the one that is able to pick us up 
and make our lives better. I tell of the story of um, somebody that um, was speaking to me some time ago where um, they suffered when they were growing up. And yesterday, some of the ladies actually touched on stuff that happened in their childhood, where they suffered living in villages where they had nothing. They couldn't even eat. How, you know, hard or how hard it would be that you are in a place, food you don't have, security, it's not there. Freedom, you don't have. But those people still have something to say thank you for. So today, I'm not going to like pieces this chapter down. I just want to pick up the positive in it to say, you know, through all the disasters that has been prophesied, there is hope. Through all the earthquakes that are going on right now, there is hope. Through the confusion in the Brexit, there is hope. Through the tears and the problems the little children that have been abused have gone through, there is hope. But I leave you with this. What are we doing? What is your role? as a disciple. Is it for us to just sit down and watch until the Lord comes back? Or has he given you a job to do? The deceivers in verse 5, they are real. What is your role? Will you listen to somebody who is telling pokers about the gospel? And they say, well, it's nothing to do with me. Will you see a child that is suffering and says, that's nothing to do with me? Will you see somebody that knows nothing about Christ? And you say, that's nothing to do with me. God is a God of wonders. He's got a lot for us to do. He's got things, work for us to do. Let's stand firm and do his will. Let's do his bidding. Let's not do the will of the enemy. Forget about your past. Praise him for what he's doing today. And let's believe him for what he's going to do tomorrow. 